When you Laval fly in to the Côte d'Azur, France, I think. you fly to Marseille, from, Cassis to... Have Pont- you taken more terrestrial transport and driven through France, past Avignon, and then along the Côte d'Azur? You'll have seen signs to Aix-en-Provence. Aix-en-Provence is a beautiful city. Aix-en-Provence city, that's airport for your ski holiday. A safe flight, perhaps, but do you know how close you came to the god particle? You should really be aware that CERN Large Hadron Collider, the Atomic Research Institute, is... Well, it's beneath you, more or less. We are going to be delving into the pantomime of propaganda, of energy, nuclear fusion... English is the language that's used, but France has the monopoly on nuclear. The only French bit of Switzerland has the CERN Large Hadron Collider. Provence, in more specific terms, Aix and Provence. Chateau Cadarache, to be even more specific. Should I be locating and disclosing to you dodgy folk on YouTube, where the experimental station ITER, or ITER as I prefer, is being built to enable fusion research at economies of scale. We can now, as a reasoning species, produce more energy from fusion than we put in. Now, I want to dispel the nonsense that you will read, or I just don't want to be grouped with that. And those that delve into fantasies, utopian fantasies, are going to be realised by boundless free energy and AI means that we won't have to work anymore. Oh, I've lost my watchers and listeners by the drove, people going over to that good news website. When you're playing balls up in Bormes Les Mimosa, you might survive. But if you're playing Patang in St Paul de Les Durance, Durance, the river, or anywhere near the Gorges de Verdun, Verdun, not the battleground, the lakes and gorges, gorgeous gorges, I know, it's cheap, or even the city of Aix-en-Provence. If anything goes wrong with those experimentations, if what a few of those space shuttle ceramic panels that are surrounding and keeping containing the hundreds of thousands of millions degrees centigrade atomic material. The concrete outer core and a little bit of insulation isn't going to contain anything. For all the scientists' brains, what if it just decides to have a meltdown? I know they're not trying to split any atoms, they're just colliding a few at very high speeds and creating just harmless hydrogen or whatever it is. Something harmless, we're told. I'm risking a digression here because I've been excited about taking hydrogen out of the atmosphere and powering my house with this for two decades now. I said this a decade ago. But now I've got to satisfy myself with heat pump technology because of the political thing of you can't have people creating the fire risk of hydrogen in everyone's homes. It makes everyone a potential terrorist. In gendarmerie terms, gendarmerie is a plod, a militarised plod, or I'll say. Pentang, you're throwing your steel balls along some more than averagely expensive gravel that's been compacted with a, through a more than averagely expensive process. And just over the horizon, something very similar is happening at atomic level. No, I don't know about you, but in my enthusiasm, I quite often send pentang balls beyond the baton. That's French for edge patterns. But those scientists, they know what they're doing. They're the best in Europe. And Europe's there's something else going to be. There's going to be no China syndrome. There's no lava flows because of melted rock from the heat of the sun escaping. Because that experimental station, the future of humanity that's nestled in Europe's cradle, requires so much water. It also, so much hydro, which is just electricity to that 
electric power, we're paying more for our electricity because we're contributing like a charity to the advancement of human science and reason. Take a moment to pat yourself on the back for that. If this was African hydroelectric power and the um, Chinese had done a Belt and Road project and they were ex- they'd be exploiting, wouldn't they? Oh, those poor Africans. The Chinese have done little less than enslave them. Although the Chinese have... <laughs> it's probably similar to the World Bank third world debt interest problem. Though um, they'd have made a balance, those new republic governments, and they'd probably get in a better deal from the Chinese. They'd have gone for the better the devil you know you'd have thought. Or perhaps playing one off against the other. I'm digressing though, aren't I? Because you're off on holiday. You're going to go on holiday to the south of France and you just want a bit of background information. Okay, here's going to come the science bit. What, you thought I wasn't going to qualify my wild accusations? Think of it as something to do while you're sat in a traffic jam behind the gendarmerie convoy of the huge pits of kit that go into making this donut, really, I suppose. I promise I'll get to the science bit and you'll all doze off. But, newsflash, French President Macron has jumped on a bandwagon. There's a list of projects of common economic European interest that the Commission has. Several carbon storage and transport projects are eligible for EU funding. There's a Norwegian-French partnership to transport carbon captured from industries and store it in the Norwegian North Sea in depleted oil and gas fields in the in the middle of nowhere between Britain and Norway. So in North East France, Lorraine, there used to be a lot of mines and they had to do some investigations. Turns out there's a lot of hydrogen. They're going to be mining hydrogen now. You don't have to suck it out of the, ox- the air and make it oxygen rich. From 2028, there's going to be 3 million tonnes of hydrogen a year. It's cheap to extract and low carbon. Since 1980 or June this year, depending on your chosen conspiracy, France faces the prospect of becoming a hub for hydrogen transport. Britain's laissez-faire with a little bit of fusion is never going to be able to keep up with huge, massive funding from French government control. Socialism. Critical metals are also going to play a key, but we've had fewer disclosures about this. Um, Lithium batteries are going to be key in France's future. The potential of nuclear fusion is considerable. The technology is not expected to be operational for several decades and is therefore unlikely to play a role in achieving the 2030 or the 2050 decarbonation targets. But There are websites that tell you, oh, it's just 10 years away. This is American anti-everything, pro-oil and coal lobby. Is globalisation really happening? Propaganda. Remember the Republicans and Trump? I was rather depressed when I heard the campaign for nuclear disarmament, that um, Mercedes-like symbol, that so anti, that one of the founders of this, in like a deathbed confession, decided nuclear is the only hope for the world because we uh, messed up so grandly. There's an EDF subsidiary, a new ad, which is developing a 270 megawatt nuclear reactors. This is fission, the old dirty stuff, dirtiest stuff that lasts for a thousand years, the waste products, that probably go to the bottom of the North Sea near Norway and Britain. Small nuclear reactors are the future, it seems. SMR. There's a changing approach of traditionally nuclear reluctant countries such as Belgium and Italy. In general, the nuclear phobic countries are not coming forward to the SMR idea. We have almost no German interlocutors. An interlocutor is the rather antiquated system where you turn your lights off on the bottom and it goes into your actual fuse box in France and then you turn your light off at the top of the stairs and something switches in your actual fuse box. That's such a simpler way of wiring up your lights. 
we have almost no German interlocutors with whom we can talk about our projects. Some member states of Europe are less explicitly positioned. Sweden and Finland are yet to take a stand while the Czech Republic is identifying potential sites. But how do you get the waste to the North Sea? Trains and lorry drivers trundling through all of Europe to get there. All the best bits, anyway. Conventional nuclear reactors do much more than 900 megawatts. We're talking about 170 megawatts for the small nuclear reactors. You'd sort of think every town could have a target for its disgruntled teenager that its school teacher has bothered it. But President Macron, in a visit to European Airbus in Toulouse, the other end of the Mediterranean coast, 54 billion investment towards the 2030 target. He used the occasion to make new announcements on energy and industrial decarbonisation, saying the government will aim to move faster and stronger in the beginning of the year 2024 with a French strategy and the reform of our European strategy. We will need to speed up our breakthrough innovations, the French president said, citing the need to explore fusion technology as well as the development of small nuclear reactors. It's a confession that fusion is a long way off. Iter in Provence is still very much a research project. Now I'll deliver the punchline halfway through if that's okay. 30% efficiency. What I'm talking here about is the thermoelectric cycle. Whether energy comes from fission, fusion, it's going to have to go through the same thermoelectric cycle that coal and oil power stations go through in order to create electricity. And that thermoelectric cycle is only 30% efficient. We've, in centuries, we haven't managed to do any better. Getting efficient work out of an energy source starts to make solar look so more efficient. Um, hydroelectric power can't be everywhere, but it's instantly electricity without going through lots of other processes. Tidal power, it's electricity. It has to be transported. Wind, uh, wind turbines, yeah, they're not so efficient in themselves. There's a lot of infrastructure for not much output. You never look into the size of turbine that it'd take to power your house and sticking that up your chimney. They know that there's going to be a flurry of responses of people with pipe dreams of what we're going to do with all this free energy from fusion. There's so many more options when people sober up to what can only really be expected. Eventually, a hydrogen infrastructure can be roadmapped just over the channel. COP28 have made a commitment to getting rid of carbon-based energy, but wimped out on actually making carbon credits tradable on the stock exchange, which is the real contribution to funding. But some scientists get in a bit more and three quarters to a full unit of energy out of what they put in and what they got out is big news for daydreamers. We're going to be able to desalinate the seas and plant the deserts. This is what you'll hear. Daily Mail, it was decredited here first. Is decredible the word? Socialist governments investing. So in America, you've got a... Let me think. In Britain, republicanism would be good because you'd be getting rid of the king, but you've got a really bad... Um, Republicans are really bad in America. Democrats, that's what you call the little bit better guys. If you had anything like socialist investment in America, the world would already be a better place. There's positive reinforcement for you and encouragement. Now, the British government, on the same day, plans to ban hydrogen-ready boilers. Gas and hydrogen-ready boilers are going to be banned in favour of failing heat pump technology. In the coldest hours, it will fail you, because it will light up. 
that's been solved now, they can all tell you. To get net zero ready. Now, I've got to tell you something about net zero. It doesn't tend to include embodied energy. The embodied energy is what? The energy used to build the thing that's making the energy. The embodied energy to build your house isn't what you can have a net zero carbon house, but that hasn't included all those heavy materials, all those bricks transported on lorries to your location. So, well, yeah, on that scale, fairly significant, but when it comes to the vast resources needed to make the ITER fusion, I'm calling it a reactor, I'm not sure what the correct terminology is, I'm pretty sure it's a reactor, donut, it would be easier to make Mont Saint-Michel from scratch, starting with a drop in the ocean. What is the carbon footprint of a new house? What is the carbon footprint of your sofa that you're sat on once it's delivered from wherever it comes from? Food mine and all those nuts and bolts that go together, transported from one side of the world, repackaged into different number boxes, and sent back in different quantity number packages. This is a thing that Britain does as a transportation hub. Useless jobs like that just make a fallacy of the great. The phallus belongs with the cock across the channel. Mass house builders have the British Conservative Party in their pockets through all the donations that they make. The banning of hydrogen-ready boilers for people's houses does show something of the lack of joined-up thinking from those leaders. Because on this same day, the hydrogen roadmap for Great Britain has been published. Setting out how Britain will produce and use the gas in industrial quantities. Not to be trusted by, with, the consumer. Hydrogen offers a clean alternatives to natural gas and could potentially replace diesel as a key fuel for lorries, trains and ships under net zero targets. It could replace gas in heavy industry. Teesside, Humberside and Merseyside are the initial sites for mass hydrogen production. For infrastructural reasons. Norfolk, Pacton, Milford Haven in South Wales and St Fergus in the northeast of Scotland. A hydrogen grid will be set up. Similar to a piped gas network, which gets to the Cotswolds, but it doesn't get to the Alps. The barn in the French Alps doesn't get piped natural gas. You have just straight electric heating or bottles. Government subsidies and grants will fund these billions, apparently. Costs will ultimately fall on taxpayers and consumers. To kickstart, hydrogen and natural gas can be combined at about 20% in initial phases, helping people get used to it. British emissions have almost halved since 1990, but the net zero target is 2050. COP28 approving the carbon trading would have funded it faster. Burying CO2 is costly. Hydrogen's got a high energy density. Hydrogen would definitely be used for heavy stuff. If you've got a kid in school, poke them in the direction of hydrogen. To it, to O. Oh. No fusion, the science bit. Much anticipated, much heralded. So these two atoms of hydrogen just colliding in a meat cute and eventually two of their kind produce a helium. This is the romantic story of fusion energy. It's not clean. It's filthy, but not as filthy as fusion. It's dirty story because of the electromagnetic panels that eventually need to be disposed of. Pretty much like any nuclear material, it only has a half-life of a hundred years or so, not thousands and infinite, but there is a way of reducing that waste. Just cold spraying tantalum Oh, you know tantalum. 
No, no one does. It's like uh, your research thing. It sort of absorbs some of the hydrogen, which is a little bit wasteful, but then it sort of like pulses hydrogen away from it even more so than the electromagnets. Quite clever, really, science. And hydrogen's such lovely stuff. It comes in all sorts of pretty colours, it seems, or other grades. You can get gold and white hydrogen. Olivine and grain water clings to an iron. There's grey and blue hydrogen. Where methane and CO2... Well, the CO2 has to be stored somewhere. So it's not a great improvement. But in this rainbow of different grades of hydrogen, there's green hydrogen from the electrolysis of water that is emission-free and it just releases some oxygen, which we all like, don't we? But this is only 1% of all hydrogen on Earth. But, you know, those glory boys, those propagandists, they're really going to cling to that 1%. We are dreaming of harnessing the fusioning plasmas that power the sun, that power the stars. Itter and fusion is still a havoc-weaking neutron source fueled by tritium produced from fission reactors. And it's powered by hundreds of megawatts of electricity from a regional electric grid and demanding unprecedented cooling water resources exceeding all energy sinks so far known. But while costs balloon... It is just one more thing, like the International Space Station, where international cooperation among nations, both friendly and semi-hostile, becomes possible. In that way, it's very good. A fraction of the cost of war. I term fusion reactor in the Cadarache region of France is only possible in similar locations, with high electric power grids and high throughput cool water systems, torrential quantities to move the heat from the material reactor vessel, plasma heating systems, tokamak, electrical systems, cryogenic refrigerators and magnetic power supplies, a thousand megawatts before you even start. Cooling water is being taken from the Canal de Provence formed by channeling the Durance River and most heat will be discharged into the atmosphere by traditional cooling towers. During fusion operations the combined flow rate of the cooling water will be 12 cubic metres per second, 180,000 gallons per minute or more than one third the flow rate of the whole canal. The level of water flow can sustain a city of one million residents, but the actual demand on the canal's water will be only a very small fraction of that value because it is power pulse will be just 400 seconds long with at most 20 such pulses daily and the cooling water will be recirculated. Through 36 kilometers of nuclear grade piping, the pipe dream hydrogen sponging Lining is a bit cutting edge, unproven. A long recognised drawback of fusion energy is neutron radiation damage to exposed materials causing swelling and embrittlement and fatigue. There's been plenty of research and development time. And same with hydrogen. Big companies that are used to drilling for oil and gas, it's new hydrogen gas, they're just in a wait and see mode. While the largest iceberg that's ever broken loose is tracked and measured by satellite. And cold ocean currents get warmer. Neutron interactions still create dangerous radioactivity in all exposed reactor components, especially producing a staggering 30,000 tonnes of radioactive waste. ITER is research. Even demonstration reactors that fusion proponents hope to deploy in the second half of the century might not even try and recover some of the heat in the components and convert it to electricity at that low 30% efficiency. Anyhow, just 2% of neutrons will be intercepted by test modules for investigating tritium production in lithium. 98% of the neutron streams will simply smash into the reactor walls or into devices in port openings. A lot of waste, and it's not benign. 80% useless. There will be as much unrecovered tritium as there is burned, all of which comes from fission reactors. 
There is no utopia of all the burned tritium being replaced by absorbing the fusion neutrons in lithium completely surrounding the reacting plasma. In small fractions, tritium does get trapped in the walls and then in the cooling liquid and into the coolant channels. It's just unpreventable. The outflow, the cooling towers, the rivers, the Durants, the Mediterranean gets full of the tritium, which only lasts a hundred years as radioactive. A tritium trail of tears. Only a tiny fraction of tokamak reactors have ever used in their magnetic confinement systems tritium. Scientists are blithely afraid of using, fusing, deuterium and tritium, seepage and the DT fusion neutrons. Deuterium and tritium are hydrogen isotopes, a 50-50 mix. You get a hundred times more neutron output with this mix, you see, rather than the deuterium alone, which would be much cleaner. This is how they get the cleanness of fusion in the propaganda. Heavy water doesn't sound so good, does it? Disinformation gets research money. There's a huge difference between heat output and electricity output. In this little experimental reactor, research reactor, 200 megawatts of power for a 400 second operating phase, just that's all they can maintain the plasma stability for. Doesn't it make you feel a little bit angry about being lied to? If such vast resources weren't going into political cooperation and borderline bribery, where could solar panels be and lithium battery storage. We've got to do the lithium battery storage as well as or some sort of electric storage. We, as a reasoning humanity species, who have obviously been informed and decided where to spend the huge carbon footprint of site preparation and supporting facilities. Negative side of the accounting ledger. Embodied energy, I hear you cry. Well, I certainly am. The liquid helium refrigerator, the cryostat, is the world's largest stainless steel vacuum vessel. The tokamak itself weighs as much as three Eiffel Towers. In mankind's search for the magic bullet of inexhaustible, cheap, clean, safe and radiation-free energy perfection, could we end up committing so much that we end up damning the very environment that we're trying to save.